Bujanagoro in East Java has been called the Texas of Indonesia. Its massive oil reserves have the potential of producing up to a quarter of a million barrels of crude oil per day. But will these oil riches help the poor local farmers whose land is increasingly being put to industrial use? We travel to East Java where the people are determined to have a say in defining their own future. In the hills of East Java, these traditional miners are working in the sweltering heat. Their quest is for a precious commodity that is putting Bojonegoro, Indonesia, on the world map. Oil. For decades, the people here have been mining the ground like in the frontier towns of the old American West. But their business is small time compared to the oil industry giants, who are now tapping Southeast Asia's largest deposits, an estimated two billion barrels of oil. This potential wealth has left many wondering, can this industrial growth also help to empower local people, most of whom are poor farmers? The answer, according to many experts, not until local communities can have a say in their own economic development. Democracy is not just about the distribution of power, it's also about cooperating to fight injustice and poverty and to develop society. Cooperation that must start with these farmers being able to voice their own aspirations for the future, says Bambang Hudayana of the Institute for Research and Empowerment. Until now, poor people living in extractive industry areas have not been getting enough attention. Attention to issues like their economic development and their inclusion in plans for the region's future. Without them being part of the process, many here, including local journalist Mukito Chitrapati, say the seeds of conflict are easily sown and emotions sometimes boil over. These pictures are from some of the demonstrations. Expectations of better jobs and a more prosperous future are already running high here, says the top political authority, Dr. Suyoto. He remains optimistic, however. The emergence of the oil and gas industry has truly raised the people's hopes here. But even he is quick to admit that oil riches may have raised expectations too much and too soon. But we have realized that it's only a small percentage of our people who can benefit from the industry. Some 80% of the people here are farmers and day laborers, many earning less than two US dollars a day. It's little wonder that many dream of a job with an oil company where even flagmen can earn three times as much. But the harsh reality is that there will actually be few low-skill jobs available in an industry that relies less on labor and more on capital and technology. And so, determined to have a say in shaping their own future, local farmers here took action. Sure, everyone wants jobs with the oil and gas industry. But some of us are thinking, let's do our own thing, let's start our own business. People here, like Diane Gamayantini and her neighbors, are finding strength in numbers, pooling another of their area's natural resources, fruit. Diane and the others are growing star fruit. Juicy, crisp, rich in antioxidants and vitamin C, and turning them into juices, sweets, and syrup. 
Diane says that it makes an important contribution to her family's earnings. It's a little extra income, not much, but it's still helping a lot. More important still, it gives women a bigger part in the local economy, a crucial first step for a more active role in society. In this conservative rural area, says Diane's husband, Agus, not everyone liked that idea at first. Sometimes the husbands will complain and say, hey, I didn't even get my breakfast today because my wife's off working with the star fruit. So my friends and I would have to go down and talk to them. By now, he says, most people have been won over to the idea of having everyone join in the process. Helping is the fact that community participation is prized in the local culture, as seen in this traditional dance, where even the audience is called on to join in. But ensuring that people who feel marginal can actively participate in community life is never easy. Diane's friend Sri Purwanti or Pur struggled hard after moving back to her home village to care for her aging father. Though now remarried, Pur was then a single mother with no idea how she would make a living. With two kids? What was I supposed to do? Thank God that my mom and dad had a star fruit garden. But left to her own devices, Pur did not know where to start. I would have to sell the fruit by myself, but I had no experience going to the market. How was I supposed to sell star fruit all by myself? By joining forces with the star fruit cooperative, Pur could now be a part of something bigger, and like the others, could help define her own future. In mining areas all over Indonesia, the Institute for Research and Empowerment helps communities like this one to organize and lobby on behalf of the people's interests. Their aim here is to get the starfruit growers and the government to work together on plans to benefit the local community. They're also reaching out to the oil companies to join the efforts. All this with backing from the United Nations Democracy Fund, UNDEF. Support from the UN Democracy Fund is impressive because it gets people from private sector, government and civil society to respond positively. Positive response that Dian and Poor hope will one day make their star fruit famous. Their activity is already showing results. Star fruit helps the economy here. And when people ask me where I'm from, they say, oh, the star food place. That makes me really proud. Despite such progress, the future of many farmers here remains in jeopardy. Java is already the world's most populated island. The rapid expansion of the oil industry on precious farmland is making it more and more difficult to grow rice and raise cattle. The negative side of the oil industry is that it's going to limit the amount of land we have for farming. They are really buying up a lot of the land. This is what I call the tragedy of the Indonesian countryside. The production units in the villages and the jobs are gradually disappearing. Sociologist Bayu Wahiono says that agriculture must move in a new direction here and that local farmers like Sukocho will once again have to lead the way. With UNDEF's support, Sukocho and others are making changes, learning to shift from raising cattle to raising goats animals that require less land for grazing. Some say changes like this are an inevitable part of Indonesia's rapid economic growth, which is pitting rural traditions against modern ambition. Most people we talk to 
welcome the transformations. Dulu, ya begitulah yang saya ceritakan tadi. Bojonegoro before was different. Everything was hard. No transportation, no telephone, no electricity. Now it's all okay. Sekarang semua sudah okay. All okay for now. The strength and power of Bojonegoro's people has always come from the Earth's riches. This, for example, was a sacred place for forging the weapons of the ancient Javanese kingdom, Majapahit. The flame is the result of natural gas deposits being released from the ground, an eternal fire. But the flame of the people's desire to shape their own destiny must be nurtured. They realize that they must seize their opportunity now, while there's still a wealth of oil in the ground and a strong local culture to build on. <laughs>